When most people think of the beach, they think of summertime, of holidays, or of just having fun. The beach is a place where you can relax, sink your toes in the sand, and enjoy the waves. But did you know that the beach is more than just a place for recreation? Beaches offer unique and irreplaceable habitat for our wildlife. The seaweed that washes up from the ocean provides an amazing food source for sandhoppers and bugs that live in the sand. The rock platforms are packed full of food like snails and crabs. It is birds that have adapted to these food-rich habitats and who dominate the coastal zone. Today we're going to tell you all about the lives of a special group of birds that call the beach their home, Australia's beach nesting shorebirds. Over to our expert, Dr. Gronya Maguire. Hi, I'm Dr. Gronya Maguire from BirdLife Australia. There are five species of beach nesting shorebirds in Australia. They all look pretty different from one another, but they all rely on coastal habitats like this one for their survival. The hooded plover is a small, stocky little shorebird and it's got a black hood and that's why it's called hoodie for short. They're found only on ocean beaches in southeastern Australia. But if you were to go over to Western Australia, you'd either see them on an ocean beach or maybe inland around a salt lake. The beach stone curlew is a giant in comparison. It's a very prehistoric looking bird and has a massive beak for crushing crabs. It's found on the northern coast of Australia and you might even find it living opposite crocodile infested waters. The pied oyster catcher is a big black and white shorebird with a long red orange bill. They're found all around the coast of Australia and they're particularly fond of ocean beaches. If you hear their call, it sounds a lot like a squeaky toy. The sooty oyster catcher on the other hand is all black which makes its red orange bill really stand out. It's a fan of rocky coastlines and that's probably because it can blend right into the rocky background. The red cap plover is the smallest of these shorebirds and it weighs the equivalent of two 50 cent coins. The male red cap plover has a bright red cap and the female has a rusty brown cap. They nest on beaches all around Australia and can also be found inland. All five of these shorebirds have one thing in common, they nest on the beach. And when we say nest, we mean they actually lay their eggs in a shallow scrape right on the sand. The nest can be anywhere on the upper beach, in the dunes or by an estuary. Hooded plovers choose to nest in very open areas so they have a full 360 degree view of approaching threats. If there is a shrub or grass in the way, then they're not going to be able to see what's coming. Nesting on the ground takes a fair bit of effort. The birds need to sit on their eggs frequently to keep them at the right temperature. They also need to hide them well from predators and so all these birds use camouflage. There is a hoodie nest on this beach. Can you spot it? Their eggs are only the size of a 20 cent piece. The eggs are not easy to find and that's why camouflage is good protection from hungry predators. Apart from camouflage, the parent birds also need to be clever. They behave in ways that will distract the attention of potential predators. You might have seen this fretting masked lapwing parent. There's no mistaking you're coming close to the nest and the parent is trying to keep you away. Beach nesting birds have a different strategy of protecting their eggs and chicks. Instead of being noisy and obvious, they try to pretend that nothing's going on. They'll sneak away from the nest and keep a careful eye on the predator. If they think the predator is getting too close to the nest, they'll rapidly run in front of it and try and lead it out of the area. When they have chicks, these distractions become more frantic. They'll even pretend they have a broken wing and distort and twist their bodies so it looks like they're injured. This is to get the predator to think, here's an easy meal. The predator will then follow the adult which is leading it away from where the chicks are hiding. Once the eggs hatch, the chicks leave the nest and follow their parents around in search for food. Oyster catcher chicks are fed by their parents for the first few weeks but plover chicks must find their own food within hours of hatching out of the egg. This doesn't mean the parents are slacking off. The parents have a full-time job showing the chicks where to feed, keeping them warm and warning them to hide from threats. It takes a long time until the chicks' wings are fully grown and they can fly out of harm's way. Until this time, they are very vulnerable. So to recap, no, not a red cap, recap, cut. So to recap, the challenge for a beach nesting bird is to go from an egg that hatches into a chick, reaches flying age, which is called fledging. After fledging, they then search for suitable habitat and the love of their life to start a family of their own. Sounds easy, right? 
Think again. Imagine having camouflaged eggs on a beach on a hot summer's day when everyone comes down to the beach to cool down. Before there were so many of us, the birds would have been well adapted to their natural threats. These would have included storms, high tides and other bird predators. Now the story is very different. There are millions of people using the coast and now there is a struggle for eggs and chicks to survive. There are feet to dodge, wheels and hooves to avoid, and people bringing their pets to the beach for walks. Off-leash dogs are the biggest threat to eggs and chicks. They can accidentally crush them, they can even eat them, and they can chase the parents, keeping them away for too long. Foxes have been introduced, and native birds like gulls and ravens have thrived alongside people so that they are now super abundant. Then there are changes that have been made to beach habitats. The dunes are now taken over by weeds and even houses. Disturbance can also kill eggs and chicks. The birds view people just the same as predators. They will use that same strategy of coming off the nest when we are close by. So if a person sits on their beach towel near a nest, or the beach gets busy with visitors, then the parents will be away from their eggs for way too long. The eggs will literally bake on the hot sand. Beach nesting birds are one of the most threatened groups of birds in the world. A hooded plover chick has only a 1 in 100 chance of survival, but it doesn't have to be that way. We have done lots of research about how to help these birds. We found that the solution is learning to share the beach with the birds. To do this, we need to provide cues to people so that they know they're about to enter an area that has camouflaged chicks and eggs on the beach. We know this works and have found that with hooded plovers, we can radically boost chick survival. I bet you're wondering what you can do to help. When you go to the beach, look out for signs. These signs will tell you how you can help. The most important things to remember are, the safest place to walk is along the water's edge. Keep clear of the dunes and the upper beach as this is where the eggs and the chicks are likely to be. And if you have a dog with you, keep your dog on a leash. If you do spot a fenced area, this means there's currently a nest or chicks on the beach. The sign will tell you to walk past along the water's edge and not to linger in the area. Only with your help can we fight extinction. Keep your dogs on a leash Cause you will plover the eggs on the beach Read the signs and you will see To survive we got to let them be Save the birds i